What's up guys? In these next few videos, I'm going to show you how to drop the beat, specifically dropping on the one. So we already learned how to count beats, bars, and phrases, and we learned where the one is. So now we're gonna learn how to drop the track in on the one of another song. But first we have to learn how to actually drop it, that technique, before we bring in another track. So on a controller, you, you guys actually have a few different options. If you were just on a turntable, you would only put your hand on the record and release it when you're gonna drop it in. But we have some buttons here and some other options that we can use. So I'm gonna show you all of that, including the traditional way. So you have the jog wheel, which I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna finish with that. And that's really the coolest because you guys actually get to scratch. But there are some easier ways, uh, which is just using the buttons. So the first way uh, is the Q feature which I sort of previewed in a previous lesson. But all that is is setting that temporary cue point, right? Just set it, and now I can actually play it, right? But if I let it go, it doesn't keep playing. So in order to drop the track, which is essentially meaning to drop it and have it continue playing, I have to press play. And then it will continue playing. So if I had another track playing and I wanted to drop this one in with that method, that's how I would do that. Another way is to just use the play button. So we load the track, say it loads on a load marker. So say it loaded on that yellow marker and you can see that right here in the software and see, oh, there's our temporary cue point as well. So if we just loaded the track um, and we just wanted it to play right then, all we would do is hit play. And there you go. And we just dropped it in uh, at that point with the play button. Now, you can also do it with a cue point. So if I had it stopped, so before it was stopped, if I just hit the cue point, it wouldn't continue playing, right? It would just kind of act like the cue button if I have to hold it, but then let it up. It's like literally the same thing. Uh, but we could, uh, what's different from the cue button is that if it was playing, so say we were beat matching it, and we had it playing or whatever, and then we wanted to drop it in without having to rewind it or stop the track, we just wanted to punch it in, then all we would do is hit the cue button, right? And then it drops it in from that point. You can see here in the software, watch it happen, right? So you can just do it just like that. But the coolest way, the most fun way, the most hands-on way, and I'm biased, this is my opinion, but the most fun way for me, the most hands-on way is to use the jog wheel. And this is fun because you guys actually get to scratch. So we're gonna get it at the beginning. And remember I said, put your hand at nine o'clock when you're using the jog wheel and make sure you have it set in the settings so that you can actually touch the top of the wheel and it will actually make a difference. Uh, so we have that all set up, ready to go. And then all you do, you can look in your software here and you can see the track moving back and forth. You wanna cue it up, like you guys learned before, to the very beginning and get it right at the beginning of that track. You can either do it by forwarding and rewinding, like I showed you, or you can do it by putting your hand on it and then hitting a cue point. And then you'll see in the software, it just jumped there and now we're right there, right? So the baby scratch is just moving the jog wheel forward and back. So you're moving the audio, the piece of audio, forward and back. Uh, so you just go forward and back, forward and back. And you're just rubbing it back and forth. And this is your first scratch that you're gonna learn. I'm gonna teach you a bunch of others in later courses, but this is the most important scratch and the scratch that all other scratches are based on. So you're just moving it back and forth and you wanna work on being really precise with it. So if you look at your software, you wanna be right at the beginning of that sound. You don't wanna be like really far um, and, and moving huge amounts of space because you might look, look at the software right now, see how that is further um, ahead of where the beat starts. And so if I were to start doing more babies, it would, there would be a delay or I wouldn't even be on the sound. So you wanna be right on that sound. And that, those were some fast babies as an example, but you get on there and then you just go forward, 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 forward. And you wanna concentrate on the forward motion 
uh, instead of the backward motion. So you can think baby, 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 but eventually you wanna think forward, 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 because you want to end forward when you're letting it go, right? Uh, so it would be forward, 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 and then you'd uh, let it go and drop it in. Uh, and I just wanna note, you're seeing some symbols next to me on the screen, uh, and that represents the baby scratch. So I created these little symbols for you guys so that you not only would uh, see me doing it and hear me doing it, but also have another way to remember these scratches. And the first one's a baby scratch. So we have, it's a little V, and then the first part of the V represents the forward motion, and the latter part of the V represents the backward motion, and it's got the F representing forward and B representing backward. And so now, whenever you see that symbol, you'll know that that is the baby scratch. And we're gonna arrange the symbols in later lessons to make a pattern, and then you'll memorize that pattern, and that's how you'll be dropping in your tracks. So that is the introduction to the beat drop-in options. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to do the release scratch. Check it out.